What's going on guys, welcome back. In today's video we're going to learn how to do professional hyperparameter tuning for machine learning models using Grid Search CV, which stands for Grid Search Cross Validation. And we're going to talk about this in a second. I'm going to do all of this here in the Jupyter Notebook. You can do it in PyCharm, you can do it in the Python Idle, it doesn't really matter, the code is the same. The only benefit that you have in a Jupyter Notebook is that you can run individual cells. So for example, I can have a cell here, I can import stuff, I can make a new cell, I can uh, define the model or load the data set, then I can train the model and I don't need to run all the code all over again. I can run pieces of code and this can be quite useful when training models. However, in order to follow along with this video, you don't need a Jupyter Notebook, you can work in PyCharm as well. And as an example here for the actual hyperparameter tuning, I'm going to take a simple k-nearest neighbors classifier that is going to classify the handwritten digits from the MNIST data set. So all we're going to do is we're going to import numpy as np. Um, and actually, we're going to import the rest when we need it. So we're going to just import numpy for now. Um, and actually, we need sklearn as well. So we need to say from sklearn.datasets import fetch underscore open ml like that. And with that, we can actually load the MNIST data set. So we're going to say MNIST equals fetch underscore open ML. And we're going to pass here as a string MNIST 784, which is the amount of pixels. So I think it's 28 by 28 or something like that. And the version is going to be one. Now this is going to probably take some time. So we're going to skip that. All right, so the data is now loaded, we can open up a new cell and take a look at it. And this is why you want to use a Jupyter notebook oftentimes for data science, because the loading took now, I don't know, two minutes or something. And you don't need to run this section all over again, when you change something in the code, which is not the case with PyCharm, for example, there you type the code and you run the full code uh, every time. And here you just, uh, here you just run the individual cells and the data is saved. So you can see here we have data and then pixel. Now what we're going to do is we're going to I think there's something called keys here. Um, there you go. And you can see what we have here, what we're actually interested in is data and target data is the pixels and target is the actual uh, digit. So we're going to say here x y equals mnist data mnist target. And the goal of this video here is not to predict handwritten digits. I have made tutorials on this already. The goal here is to understand what grid search does what hyperparameter tuning does um, when we work with uh, data science stuff. So here we have that and we're going to now convert all this to numpy because I think by default, it's not y to numpy. And then there you go, those are the pixels and those are the classifications. So the actual digits that are represented by the pixels. Um, the only thing that we now need to do is we need to split into training and testing data, but the MNIST data set has done this for us already. So we don't need to do a manual split. We already know that the first 60,000 images or the first, uh, first 60,000 uh, digits are actually the training data and the rest is the testing data. So we're going to say x underscore train x underscore test y underscore train y underscore test is equal to x. Um, so x train is up until 60,000. Then the rest is from 60,000 up until the end. And same thing for y. There you go. All right. And this is now just a data in order to now train a model on this data, what we can do, of course, is we can say from sklearn dot, I think it was neighbors import k, uh, what was it k and n or k nearest neighbors k neighbors classifier, neighbors classifier. Um, and I think yeah, that works. So all I need to do here is I need to say CLF equals k neighbors classifier. And uh, then I can just choose some parameters here. So for example, uh, we can go to the documentation actually. So we can say SK learn K neighbors. And we can look at the different parameters that we can choose here. For example, we can decide how to wait, uh, how the waiting is done, how many neighbors we want to look at, 
uh, what algorithm we want to use and so on. So we have a bunch of hyperparameters. These are called hyperparameters because they're parameters that are, um, that are set for the model to work differently. And we can tune those to get the optimal model. So for example, what do we have here? Let's say n neighbors. We want to look at one neighbor, neighbors equals one, and the weighting is uniform. So it doesn't really matter uh, how far you are away. So weighting or what was it? Weight? Oh, weights. There you go. Weights is just uniform. And then uh, I think this works. So CLF dot fit. This trains it on the X train and on the Y train. Now we have this classifier and all I need to do in order to see how well it performs on the test data is CLF dot score. And I can type um, X test Y test. And I hope this doesn't take too long. Otherwise, we're just going to skip that again. All right, and you can see we already end up with a quite decent score of 96.91%. Uh, and the reason for that is that this problem is quite simple. So we don't need a complicated convolutional neural network to classify handwritten digits. A K neighbors classifier with not optimal parameters is enough to get a pretty decent score. Um, but we can increase that score by using something called grid search CV. And this stands for grid search cross validation. So cross validation is a way of evaluating your model similar to score, but it works differently. Because what score does in a, nut, uh, in a nutshell is that it basically takes a test data, it tries to make predictions on the test data, and then it compares those predictions to the uh, actual Y labels that we have. Um, and then we get a score in this case, 96.91% means that this percentage was classified correctly and the rest not. Now, with cross validation, what we do is we split the data into so called folds. So into into equal parts, and we take all but one folds in order to train a model and then the remaining fold to evaluate it. And we do it with all possible combinations. So for example, if we have 10 folds, this means that we use nine for training, and we evaluate the trained model on one, then we do the same thing with different nine and a different one for evaluation until we have all the combinations. So we have 10 iterations in this case, and then we get a representative result of the scoring. Now we could do this manually here as well. So we could instead of just uh, using the score function, we could import here from sklearn dot, uh, what was it model selection, we could just import the cross val score. And instead of scoring like that, we could go ahead and say, uh, cross underscore val underscore score. And uh, we could just pass the classifier and then the x train and the y train. And uh, we could do that. So CV three, which means three folds in this case, and then we can specify a scoring method, which is accuracy, I'm not going to run this here. Now, I'm just showing you how to do this. And this would evaluate it on the train data. So here we evaluate it on the test data. This is a different thing, obviously. But this is what we do with cross validation. And now grid search, what grid search does is it takes our parameters that we give to it. Now I deleted the scoring doesn't really matter. Um, but it takes basically a so called parameter grid, so possible parameters to choose from. And then it does that cross validation on the train data to find which model with which hyperparameters performs the best. And we can do this the following way, we can just say param grid for parameter grid. And this is a dictionary, essentially, or actually, it's a list of dictionaries, because we can have different combinations. So we have a list and inside that list, we have a dictionary. And here we have certain key value pairs, for example, n neighbors can be set to and then we have a list of values to choose from. So n neighbors can be one can be three can be five can be seven can be nine and so on. Um, or actually, let's let's just go to seven because you need to think about it that way. I'm now going to add an additional one like weights, for example. And the problem is that you don't just if you add one more thing, you don't just get one more iteration, but you get way more iterations because you have to go through all the combinations. So for example, if I have here uniform, and uh, what was the, un, uh, the, the other one distance, right? The problem is now, if I have these four numbers and those two, I have to do it um, eight times because I have one times with uniform or one neighbor with uniform, one neighbor with distance, three uniform, three distance, and so on. Now, if I add a nine, I don't just get one more, I get two more in this case. And of course, if I have more parameters, so for example, what do we have here? 
Uh, let's go with leaf size. I mean, this is actually Yeah, okay, let's go with leaf size and the default is 30. So let's just type leaf. What was it underscore? Yeah, leaf size is, let's say 10, 30, 50, something like that. Now, all these combinations are going to be tried, we're going to do one uniform 10, one uniform 30, one uniform 50, one distance 10, one distance 30, and so on. And then the model is going to do cross validation, the grid search is going to do cross validation for each combination. So this is going to take quite some time here. And the result is then going to be the optimal model. So in order to do that, what we need to do is we need to first import the grid search like that grid search CV from model selection. And here we're going to say grid underscore search is a new grid search CV object. Come on auto completion. Grid search CV. Did I run this? I didn't run this, right? That's why it doesn't know it. Grid search CV. And then we're going to pass the classifier. Now in this case, we're going to remove these parameters that we set. So we're going to do it like that. And we don't fit yet. So we actually delete that. Um, so we're passing the classifier and we're passing also the parameter grid. And we're passing the cross validation parameter here, let's do three, then we're going to define scoring is accuracy. And the return train score variable is going to be set to true. And now all we need to do is we need to fit a new model. So grid search dot fit on x train and y train. And this is going to give us different models with different uh, different hyperparameters and average accuracies. And then we can choose the best one from that. So I'm going to run this now. And this is going to take some time. So we're going to skip that part. All right, so finally, after quite some time, the grid search is done. Now I need to mention I changed a couple of things here. First of all, I removed the third parameter called leaf size because it just took way too long. And second of all, I changed this parameter or I added the parameter verbose equal to 10 to the grid search constructor. And the effect of that is that you see the progress as it's happening. You can see here that we have uh, three cross validation iterations, and we have uh, eight candidates. So eight parameters four times two, um, which basically means three times eight. So total of 24 fits and each of them took like 40 30 seconds, something like that. And uh, here we have the grid search that is now trained. And in order to get the best candidate, the best uh, model that was trained, we now have to say, uh, let's call it final CLF. And we're going to call this grid search, or we're going to get the grid search, best underscore estimator underscore. And we can actually see what that is. And this is in this case, a uh, K neighbors classifier with three neighbors and weights equal to distance. And we can now see if this outperforms the original model. Uh, so the basic model that we tried had an accuracy of 96.91. And now if we say final CLF dot score, x test, y test. This is going to take a couple of seconds, and then we're going to see the result. And in fact, you can see the results actually improved, we have now 97.17 accuracy and before we had 96.91. So we increased the accuracy by just tweaking some hyperparameters. And this was done automatically, of course, we can do it manually as, uh, as well, we can just use the cross validation, and we can tweak the parameters and train new models and see what works best and so on. Uh, but this does it for us, this does it automatically. And uh, it tried 24 fits or it tried eight possible combinations three times uh, with cross validation, this was the best estimator and it had an accuracy of 97.17%. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.